What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spankle and today I'm excited because I'm bringing you guys a hero deck profile. No, it's not your typical hero build. It's not the same vision hero combo Nibiru token pass build. This is a very control based hero build that can compete against today's meta and it's very anti-meta in a sense. But if you guys do enjoy these videos, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content. I'm really excited to be bringing this profile to you guys. I've been playtesting it. I've been having a lot of fun with it and I think really it is the best way to play hero at a competitive level in today's format. So thank you guys all for watching and with that let's get into the deck profile. Okay so to get started off with this deck profile I do want to say that as you guys look at it right over here it may not look like your typical hero build however if you guys didn't watch my combo video the combo video should be linked in the description below I can show you guys how this deck is played it's played a lot differently than your typical hero builds it's very much more of a control build where you pretty much stay on dark law protect your dark law with your dpe and pretty much your opponent especially if they're playing meta or any deck really it's going to be very difficult for them to play around dpe right so let's get into the deck profile here i'll explain my choice a little bit more maybe it'll make a little bit more sense but first we're starting off with two stratos we're not playing three it's actually funny enough not your best normal summon it's not bad in the deck don't get me wrong but this deck doesn't really have a lot of ways to special summon outside of having like a hero lives right so you don't really want to use your normal summon on stratos because there's other things that you would rather normal summon of course of this paired with something like a fire flint lady is perfectly fine you can still get your combo off but it's just not your best normal summon anymore however what is your best normal summon is your elemental hero solid soldier the deck is pretty much based around solid soldier and it's pretty much crazy because this will let you special summon your shadow miss and that's how your combos all get started again if you guys want to see the combo video it should be on the channel already you guys can check that out but this combo right here solid soldier into shadow mist pretty much ends on a dark law a dpe and potentially just other cards set because as you guys can see we're playing a lot of hand traps here and the whole point of the deck is to make dark law dpe as fast as possible and have hand traps in your hand so that essentially your opponent can't play through that board right so yeah we're playing three and three of course we want to draw this as fast as possible and then we're playing one liquid soldier we're not actually playing any fusion targets here the only card we're playing to fusion summon is mass change but this is a pretty good extender in the mid to late game to special something back from your graveyard so that's why we're playing the one liquid soldier as well as the one honest neos now this is always going to be searchable in your combo so keep that in mind the reason you're only playing one is because you're always just going to search it and you're always going to have it so that you can protect your dark law from battle right and then moving on we are playing the one dasher as well as the one celestial these are of course our dpe targets we have to be playing these then we're playing one fire flint lady as well as one infernoble knight Raynod. now it'll make a lot more sense when you guys watch the combos but essentially the reason you need to be playing Raynod is because it's going to add back the living fossil from your graveyard which lets you get an extra extender for you and this card essentially can also help you make into something like an apollo on your first turn because some boards you can end on an apollo plus a dp and a dark law which is even stronger right so that's why you want to be playing the Raynod. now i really like the fire flint lady one because she's just an extender if you open her with any other warrior but two on top of that she has a really cool effect where essentially if she's on the field you can send it from the field to the graveyard to special summon a level four lower warrior monster from your hand so the nice thing is if you need to use your normal summon on for example on a stratos and then you can't get your shadow mist on the board you can't get your mass change live and you have a fire flint lady in hand you can summon your stratos search a shadow mist go fire flint lady fire flint lady effect a special summon your shadow mist now you're going to get that off and you're going to get the full combo going so that's really it for the combo pieces the hero cards the warrior cards that's really it and then for the hand traps we are maxing out on three ash as well as three ghost spell we're playing two valor as well as one droll and triple imperm so let me give you guys a just quick breakdown why we're playing this hand trap lineup now despia is in the format and very very relevant and the best two hand traps against despia are ash and your ghost spell right so that's why you definitely want to be maxing out on these two i wanted to show you guys here in the side deck that you guys could play ogre as well because we for all we know brave is still going to be very relevant and ghost ogre is really good into brave so you guys can play ghost ogre here instead of the veilers you can play nib i don't think nib is going to be as great anymore because despia can play around it but the point is you guys can play really any hand traps you want to and yeah we're just maxing out i think on the best ones over here veiler is really good into the despia matchup as well arguably you can switch this out for the ogre you could also switch droll and lock bird in for like an ogre or something like that we're only playing the one because again this deck is very susceptible to hand traps at the end of the day and you always want your combo to go off so for that reason we are playing the cross outs which i'm going to get into sorry i don't want to keep skipping around but i just want to explain why we're playing the hand traps the way we are the two veiler the one droll are specifically just for the cross out so we don't lose something like that right so of course three imperm as well is really really good then for this spell cards this deck is like really hyper consistent you have three e emergency call two hero lives we got three mask change one reinforcements of the army 
double fusion destiny so like you guys can see that even if you draw your fusion destiny it's actually really powerful because then you don't have to go into virate and then get that hit by a hand trap you can actually just go into your dpe but you guys can see here e emergency call searches anything it's also not once per turn by the way so you searches all your heroes here your stratos your soul soldier your shadow miss are all elemental hero names you have your hero lives where if you open just a normal summon and you don't open your shadow mist or something like that you can hero lives it out you have your mass changes of course which you're always going to want to search with your shadow mist but if you open it then you can actually use shadow mist a second effect to get an extra search instead of using the special summon effect then you have the rota of course which will search you pretty much anything in your deck fusion destiny and then living fossil is really good because it's part of your combo and then like i said earlier one call by the grave and two cross out designator this is just so you don't lose to hand traps and again you guys might be looking at this and being like okay well ghost ogre is a little bit better this format or this is a little bit better this format or my locals likes to play these hand traps or you know so keep that in mind when you guys are building this deck this is how i think the deck should be built in terms of a framework but however each single card and especially in terms of the hand traps i think this shouldn't change but specifically the hand traps you guys can adjust those based off of your needs or where the format evolves so if you guys are watching this video in like three to four months after i posted it and the format is different just switch the hand traps to whatever are relevant for that format i just want to keep that in mind that's that's what when you guys watch these deck profile i want you guys to keep in mind that you know hand traps can always be swapped in and out depending on the format so yeah so that's it for the main deck it's 41 cards in the main deck i wanted to make it 42 and 43 actually i was playing double malicious for a while because fusion destiny sending malicious is really good it's an extra extender for you but the reason i chose not to do that is because one it made the deck a little bit more bricky funny enough you would think that you want to play more than 40 because you don't want to draw into your destiny heroes which is true but as soon as you play more than like 41 42 cards then you're also not drawing your solid soldier or your elemental hero shadow miss either and then it becomes just a weird you know inconsistent deck with this build it's very consistent you know you draw your destiny hero sucks it's not the worst in the world but you know you don't want to draw it at the end of the day but again they're not the worst thing in the world to do if you draw them so that's why i think 41 cards is perfect for this deck and again super hyper consistent with the three e calls and the rota and all that stuff right so then moving on to the extra deck here we're playing one diane we're just playing one of every like pretty much attribute for your deck so you're playing one diane playing anki you're playing acid acid of course for the one liquid soldier that comes up you're playing dpe of course you're playing double dark law now dark law is obviously the go-to card in this deck it's pretty much the reason why this deck is a very anti-meta deck because again i don't know if i explained it at the beginning of the video but just to explain it a little bit more now essentially this deck is a very control based deck right and if you think about any meta deck in today's format and even if you think about all the rogue decks in today's format but if you think about the meta decks right this card pretty much ruins most of the meta decks now maybe flunderies can play around this but generally most most meta decks will need to search a card and of course if they search a card dark law will snipe a card from their hand but then on top of that if everything gets banished and they can't get it into the graveyard they have a really hard time playing through because a lot of the meta decks have graveyard effects have relevant graveyard effects i should say so that's why dark law is very important then we're playing with a one blast of course as well for the straddles because it's a wind we're playing one ip ip is really good because sometimes if you open your fusion destiny you actually don't need to go into the verite so instead you'll go into your ip mascarena and then you have stuff like your soul which is part of your combo dark is really good in the mid to late game as well you have unicorn you have verte one cross crusader cross crusader is really important here as well sometimes this actually does come up you can actually summon your dpe back which is very powerful so we do like the one cross crusader one apollo because it does come up here and there some of your hands can make this it's very very powerful and then one access code it helps you push for a game so that's really it for the deck like i really wanted to show you guys that this deck is very different from the classic hero things that you guys might be seeing now i don't know how the feedback on this deck profile is going to be in the comment section down below i know there's going to be a lot of people especially hero players that are going to be like no you have to play the vision hero package you have to play the combo package like hero's best combo is nibiru token pass because every single hero player wants to go hard go ham and lose to a single hand trap lose to a single nibiru you don't want that you want to be competitive and i really wanted to make this deck as competitive as possible for today's format not just like hey let's do a cookie cutter hero deck and hope i win that's not how the game is played and I hate to say it and it's just the reality of it. I'm sorry if you guys are a hero player and you guys are hearing this, but if you guys think that going the vision hero package and going the Mallies and the special summoning and all that, you don't put up a negate. The deck does not put up any negates, right? What are you doing? You're gonna lose to a single hand trap, you're gonna lose to a single Nibiru, it's not worth it. Just play something simplistic like this. You can still end on a really, really powerful board and this can actually compete and stay on par with the meta. Now, I'm not saying that this is gonna be the best deck. I'm not trying to tell you guys that, oh, this build of hero 
hero is going to change the game and every single person who's playing this build is going to go top of ICS. Of course, that's not true. But what I'm saying is if you do want to play hero and you do want to be able to compete against some of the meta decks at your locals at regionals, I think this is the best way to play it. Now, again, the last thing I want to say before we end this off is with the hand trap lineup, again, you guys can swap it out depending on what your locals is, where the meta evolves to. I just wanted to play the bells because bells is really good into Despia. But again, if Brave is still going to be very, very relevant, swap out the Veilers and put in the Ghost Ogres because drawing them is really good but on top of that if people are playing ghost ogre and stuff like that you can obviously stop them from using it against you with something like a cross out designator over here right so again the hand trap lineup you guys can swap it in and out depending on how you guys see fit but i think this build is really really strong really really powerful i wouldn't change this at all so thank you guys all for watching i know i kind of went on a little rant but uh try this deck out yourselves and you guys might see what i'm talking about so that is it for today's deck profile i hope you guys did enjoy i know i kind of went on a little rant near the end just talking about why the deck should be played a different way in today's format and i hope you guys really when you test it out can see why i'm saying the things that i'm saying trust me guys when i say that this deck is very very powerful it's very simplistic yes but the boards are really really strong especially against today's format especially being able to search your honest neos pretty much every turn so your dark law is always going to be protected from battle you have your dpe to protect your dark law you have your dpes just just to stop anything your opponent's doing dpe is such a powerful card right and this deck is very very consistent as well which is why i think you guys should try it out now thank you guys all for watching i appreciate every single one of you make sure to like and subscribe if you guys haven't already and with that spanko sign and out peace